Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to look at charge moving at an angle to a magnetic field. So let's get started. Now, we've already seen what happens when charge moves perpendicular to a magnetic field, we'll get circular motion of our charge. But we're now going to look at what happens when charge enters a magnetic field at an angle. So it says we have just seen that a charged particle, such as an electron, entering a magnetic field at right angles will follow a circular path. However, if it enters at an angle, it will follow a helical path as it moves forwards. This is due to the two components of the particle's velocity, one perpendicular to the magnetic field, which is v sine theta, creating the circular motion, and a component parallel to the field, which is v cos theta, creating the pitch in the helix. So let's say I've got my magnetic field direction going to the right, and I've got an electron entering the magnetic field at this point at the top at an angle. Then at this angle, we could sketch what the velocity vector looks like, which is this thing on the left here. And you'll notice that it's got an angle theta here that it makes with the horizontal, which is v cos theta, the component v cos theta, which is causing the pitch in the helix. And what we mean by the pitch in the helix is the distance between two adjacent points. And what we mean by the pitch in the helix is the distance between two adjacent points, like the distance between the bottom of this circular part and this circular part. We've also said we've also got a perpendicular component of the velocity, which is this v sine theta, and this one is creating the circular motion that we see. And what we end up with as a result of these two things is that the electron will travel in this helical motion. So just to show you a quick simulation of this, let's say this time we've got a magnetic field going down the way, and this time we've got our charge entering at an angle theta with a velocity v in this direction. Then what will happen is the charge will move in this helical motion, and we can actually label the force vector as well, which is this purple one here, and you'll see that it moves round to act towards the centre of the sort of circular path of the helical motion. And we can also label the parts of the velocity here, the components, where we've got the velocity vector v in this direction, v sine theta, which is the component of velocity perpendicular to the field, and v cos theta, which is the component of velocity parallel to the field. So v sine theta causes the circular motion, and v cos theta gives us the pitch, which is the distance between any two successive points. Going back to the notes now, we've got an expression for pitch, and this says that the pitch is the distance between adjacent loops in the helix after one period and is given by p equals v cos theta t. So you'll see that we've used lowercase p to mean pitch, but you could just write out the word pitch if you prefer. You'll also see we've used the velocity parallel to the magnetic field, and capital T is the period for one loop, i.e. the time taken for the charge to move round in one complete revolution. And in a sense, this is just a speed distance time equation, where p is our distance, v cos theta is our component of the velocity, and period t is our time. As well as the pitch of the helix, you could also be asked to derive an expression or calculate the frequency of the rotation. And we can determine this using the angular velocity omega equals v over r, which you saw in the rotational motion topic, as well as omega equals 2 pi f. So from the theory video for a charge moving perpendicular to a magnetic field, we saw that we can equate the two forces for magnetic force and centripetal force, and that is because the magnetic force causes the centripetal force to happen. So if we do that, we get QVB equals MV squared over R, and then if we cancel out a V, we end up with QB equals MV over R. And you'll notice that we've got this V over R expression in the fraction here, but we can also come up with an expression for v over r in terms of omega. So we've said here that v over r is equal to omega, but omega is also equal to 2 pi f from this equation. So we can say that v over r is equal to omega, which is also equal to 2 pi f, is equal to qb over m. Since we've got this qb on the left here, and we can just divide by m there. So we've got 2 pi f equals qb over m. And now we've got frequency in our expression, which is what we want. So if we divide both sides by 2 pi here, this 2 pi comes underneath, and we get f equals qb over 2 pi m. So we can now find the frequency of the rotation. And also, since the period is equal to 1 over frequency, we can also form an expression for the period of rotation t. So because t is equal to 1 over f, to get 1 over f here, we can just do it 1 over this side, which actually just flips the numerator and denominator of the fraction. So this becomes t equals 2 pi m over qb. It then says the above expressions for pitch, frequency, and period are not given on the relationship sheet in the exam. So it's a good idea to be able to manipulate these expressions to get the frequency and the period. Lastly, it says to note that the orbit frequency does not depend on the speed v or radius r. It is dependent, however, on the charge to mass ratio, which is this q over m, and the magnetic induction b. Positive charges will orbit in the opposite sense to negative charges, with force F reversed. Particles having the same charge but different masses, for example electrons and protons, 
entering the magnetic field along the same line will have different radii of orbit. And this is useful in mass spectrometers where you can work out what particles are based on their radii of orbit. And lastly, the kinetic energy of the particle in orbit is a constant because its orbital speed is constant. The magnetic force does no work on the charges. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.